Hello everyone, and today we have uh, Leslie Roy from Ireland that uh, will go to Rotterdam this year to represent uh, her country with the song Maps. Hello Leslie, how are you? How are you doing? Hi, I'm so well. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for, for having us. <laughs> I'm, as I said, I'm very happy to, to have an opportunity to talk to you. So I will move to the first question that I want to ask, and uh, I want to ask about the general things for the first, uh, first of all. So I want to ask, are you a Eurovision fan? Yes, yes, I have always been a massive Eurovision fan. I watched it with my family growing up when I was a child here in Dublin, in Ireland, and we would write down our points and we would have scoreboards. Before we had all of the nice scoreboards on our phone, we would write down our points and everything and we would try and pick who the winner would be. And I watched it like every single year and I, it, it really stuck in my head as a child that this could be something since I'm so passionate about songwriting that I could do potentially when I grow up for, for my country. Oh gosh, that's so cute when some Eurovision fans are going to Eurovision. So we are really excited to see the people like 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 you. <laughs> <laughs> the competition. So um, as I understand, like you you watched these competitions from like your childhood, so you followed all the years. So can you tell us which song from this competition is your like massive favorite one? Of, of all time <laughs> yes and time. that is such a, a such a tricky question I mean I think it changes for me every couple of years it, it goes back and forth I mean obviously I know everybody loves the euphorias but Ireland has won it still the most amount of times and I think in your eyes by Neve Cavanagh and the, the rock and roll kids is very special for me but the, there's just there's been so many great songs over the past you know 10 years I think Arcade really stood out to me as a songwriter and that was when I clicked back into thinking okay I think the Eurovision is going in such a certain direction that now might be the time for me to start to send a song so Arcade was kind of like a light bulb moment for me so that's been a big song as well Okay, I got it. So I want to ask, how did you decide to go there? And I think that you are already the answer to this, that question. Like, what was the other reasons that you like you decided to, I'm going there and I want to do this? Yeah, well, um, like a little bit of my backstory before getting to the Eurovision is I've been an artist and a songwriter for the past 15 years. I've worked in America, I've, I've, seen, I've written songs for so many people, so I've been very lucky that I've done so many things as a songwriter and the Eurovision was still one thing that I hadn't tried to do yet. So it was in the back of my mind for a long time. So I had, like I said, I'd been watching every single year an arcade come on and I thought, uh, for some reason, it felt like the time in 2019 to send a song. And I had thought for a while that that song that could do well in the show would be a song that I'd written a couple of years before, which was Story of My Life. I thought it was catchy enough. I thought it would be different enough for Ireland. So I think it was just a combination of always wanting to do it and just feeling for some crazy reason that 2019 was the time to do it. Okay, I got it. So you say that you are uh, a songwriter as well. So when you decide to do this whole Eurovision thing, were you thinking about the sending only the song that you wrote yourself, not singing it by yourself, or you like definitely want to to go like yourself there to sing it? Yeah, I think uh, for last year, for twenty twenty, uh, and for this year, um, it's always been both. Um, story of my life was my song. It was kind of my story. I had an idea of. Um, you know, how I wanted people for them to tell their story and the same with maps. I've spent this whole last year really trying. I wrote so many songs to get to, to maps. So I think I have always seen myself singing it and also writing it. But I also think if someone came to me 
and said, you know, we're working on this single for Azerbaijan or wherever, you know, I, I can remove myself as a singer and write for other people. But for me, for Ireland, I think it was special to write it and also sing it. Oh, got it. So what do you think about the future? Uh, is there any possibility to write songs for other countries in the future? Yes, 100%, always. Once I get my performance out of the way, I, I really hope that I can write as many songs for different countries next year. I would love that. Oh, that's, that's so cool. So, okay, let's move to 2020, the last year when you came to this competition. And as we know, unfortunately, that contest got cancelled. Like, what did you did you feel when when you heard that that news? And like, what were your your emotions at that time? Um, when I got the phone call, I, I just I felt so sad. I just felt so sad. And I because um, in, obviously anybody would be excited to to go and do it. And people were really loving the song, and it was going into the charts and people, it was doing what I thought it might do, which was get everybody really excited again. So when it got canceled, it was very sad, obviously very sad for all the other artists as well, all over the countries. But, you know, there were so many other bigger things happening in the world, people getting so sick and dying that, you know, this competition getting canceled wasn't the worst possible thing in the world. So I felt, sad but also very lucky that i was able to stay safe gotcha like we all were so sad when we heard that news but uh life is continuing and i want to ask them my next question it's like it took uh quite long time before the broadcaster like revealed you as a representative for this year like did you know yourself that you are going to this competition like uh, back then in summer or, or or when when did you hear from the broadcaster that you are the one who will represent the country this year? Well, um, I had a, many conversations uh, with, with our broadcasters, with RTE and Michael, who is our head of delegation, um, as soon as it got cancelled. And we kind of came up with a plan that when it was safe for me to travel and go and start to write songs, I would go and start to work on what a song would be. So I think that was August, September, by the time I was able to safely go and work with some people. So, you know, I had said, I don't want to get a sympathy ticket to Rotterdam. This is a song contest and the song has to be there, ready to go before I want them to say yes. So once I had written maps and I knew that this was, it, brilliant and the best song that I could take home to the to the broadcasters and um, then I said this this is what I have and if you you know if you don't like it that's I totally fine please move on with whoever else but they loved it and I think we kind of decided that in October and then we announced it in December so you know I only knew from October that it was a yes but I've been working on it since the cancellation so Yes, I understand you. So, okay, let's talk about the maps. How how um, this song was created? Yeah, so I wrote this song with a couple of my really close songwriters, uh, Philip Strand, Emily Erickson, and Lucas Halgren. Who Lucas Halgren also wrote and produced a track in 2019, uh, Eurovision. She got me. So, um, and yeah. he has had some taste in the Eurovision world already. So I had written so many different songs and I was getting kind of lost in all of the songwriting and that kind of led me to this 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 idea this song of feeling lost and searching for what feels right and what's true to you what's what's your kind of internal home um, and that's where Max kind of sprung from so it was what the last song that I wrote of many many songs and I got the verse, melody and lyric first and the rest of the song just came in about 20 minutes. So it was really quick once the, once the light bulb went off eventually. So that's kind of where Maps really was born from. Oh yes. So you said that you had some other options as well. So like 
how many songs were there and uh when you, you say that you wrote the maps and you saw that this is definitely the one that you want to go with yes yeah, yeah. or how that happened all, all, all that things well so I, want, like, I remember and, yeah oh, no no please i remember that we <laughs> i remember that we shared the news uh on our blog uh, it was like in september if i'm not mistaken that you were uh working on some uh, on, on song with the representative of norway uh in which represent, represented the country in 2017. I'm so sorry, I forgot his name. Okay. Uh, yes. yes, yes. And you were uh, working on that song. So I remember that you had some preparations. So yeah. like how all that things happened? Can, can you tell us about your whole that yeah. event? I mean, I just, you know, I had contacted many different writers and producers when I knew I was you know, going to set out a certain amount of time to write this song. So I had a songwriting session every day for, for weeks with, with people like Yoast and people from all over the world, people in Ireland. Um, and I, we wrote so many great, great songs, but it just wasn't perfect for, for me. And I knew that once I heard it, once we, we got it, I knew what the song would be. But it sometimes takes a while and a lot of experiments to get to the right song, I find, anyway. But we, are, we wrote a lot of songs, lots of different people, and I don't know what I'm going to do with those songs, if they're for other people or if I release them after the show. But Maps was by far the, the most anthemic and relatable and different that I could write. Okay, I got you. So, um, you really like the maps, as I understand, <laughs> and I want yes. to ask you, uh, which one do you prefer, like, which one do you like more? The story of my life or maps? <laughs> I think it's just, it, that's like asking what, what children do you prefer? <laughs> which of your babies is the best baby? It's, that's so hard. They're so different for me. They're, they, they're just so, like, two different worlds, and... I, I love them both because, you know, without Story of My Life, there is no maps. So they helped create each other. And Story of My Life helped a lot of people around their world tell their story and have a dance party during all these lockdowns. And I hope maps reaches a lot of people as well and, and touches people that are kind of struggling and feeling very lost inside right now. So I, I love them equally. I'm sorry, I can't answer that one over the I other. I totally understand you. So, okay, I want to ask about the music video that you you, you did for for maps. Like, I can see the picture yeah. uh, at your behind. Like, were you inspired by that, or it was taken uh, during that uh, time? Like, this is a lovely gift that I just received uh, from a fan oh. because they loved oh, the, yeah. the video so much, and they wanted. Uh, I have a, like a little studio here in Dublin, in Balbriggan, where I'm from in the Irish Institute of Music and Song and I have my room here and they wanted my room to look more like maps. Oh, so they sent cute. me this beautiful scenery um, and the, the music video was so much fun to, to produce and shoot and it was beautiful in Wicklow here in Ireland and I found an amazing director called Ash Brady and she, as you saw, it, it looks like a movie and it fits the song so well. Definitely, like the music video was everything. I just <laughs> adored it. Good. So uh, let's 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 move to the staging of, of your song. Uh, is every uh, like have you already prepared the staging for this song? We are, I think, in the middle of all the preparations, and I'm very lucky this year. I have Frederick Reidman who did the choreography and the creative direction for Mons in for Heroes. So yeah. the, the man that put together that amazing dance at for Mons is working on our, on our on maps. So he and I are working every day online on how to make this very, very beautiful, very unique. And I'm so excited to, for everyone to see the staging. Uh, I get it. So like uh, you have a deadline, like uh, at the end of March, you should send your backup performance to... Yes. to 
afternoon. So, like, where are you going to to do that performance? Because uh, some countries are going to to different countries. Someone doing it at their countries. Like, what 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 what's your plans about it? Yeah, we have already filmed and sent off our backup oh. tape uh, two weeks ago um, in our broadcasters' television studios, so in RTE in Dublin, in our, our very large and beautiful uh, one of our studios. So we have filmed that and it's done, it's gone, and we've sent it off. And, you know, it's very different because this is the first year that any country has had to create something that's like the Eurovision, but it's very hard to create from, you know, your yeah. any country. It's not the same. So, you know, it was interesting to film. We had a great team in RTE and we did we have a beautiful, well shot performance of maps. But I do hope that we still get to just perform it in Rotterdam as well. So as I understand, uh, your performance uh, like you, you did in your backup performance is different from the one that are you going to do in Rotterdam? Yes, it is. So aren't you afraid that uh, like there is still a chance, the possibility that you won't be able to go there, like to Rotterdam? Aren't you afraid of that? Yes, but there was no way really physically with timing and construction for us to build the same stage in Ireland that we will build in Rotterdam. So it's just a chance that we have to take and it's completely out of my control and I would imagine that a lot of countries are in the same position that they're not going to be able to have the same performance mm -hmm. on the backup tape that they would in it's kind of impossible so it is what it is. <laughs> so what do you think about the whole of this thing like do you think it's fair to do something like this like when not everyone have the same chances the same like uh, yeah. way to do this thing. Um, I'm, I mean, I think fair, I don't know. I think it's it's hard probably for a lot of countries. You know, I like you said, I, I'm not going to get to present the exact presentation yeah. if they have to use it. So I think it's difficult, but I also think it's difficult for the EBU and the Eurovision because they need something just in case. And this is the first time this has happened. So maybe, you know, if this is how the world is every year, they will figure out a more fair way of doing it. So hopefully everything will be okay and all of the contestants will be able to, to travel to Rotterdam. So, because we really want to see every and each of you there on, the, on that stage. Yes. Like, I, we can't imagine the competition without everyone in the same in the same situation like i know yeah it's so you know strange. it's it's quite strange but they're doing a lot to make sure it's as safe as possible and there's going to be testing every day um and we'll fly there and we'll only be with a small amount of people and um, with the masks and everything so hopefully we can all perform yes so Leslie, I think that I've finished all my questions. It was so nice to talk to you. I'm, I'm so happy that I had this opportunity. So do you have anything to say to your fans here in Azerbaijan and like the whole the fans that are watching this? In yes, um, to all the, the Irish Eurovision fans in Azerbaijan, thank you so much for listening to Max and for messaging me and streaming it and supporting this song and i love samira and i can't wait to see the song and i hope we we have a great night in semi-final one and i hope that the azerbaijan can get behind ireland and vote for us yes we hope for that as well so yeah thank you and i should say bye thank you bye